guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are talking about my top comics, graphic novels, and manga of 2020. So I have 10 listed here for you guys today. They are going to be in my favorite order, so from 10 to 1, which means we're going to be mixing around the comics, graphic novels, and manga, and I'm super, super excited. I read quite a bit of manga and graphic novel comic stuff in 2020. I will leave my stats video linked down below in case you're curious, but almost a quarter of what I read in 2020 was manga. So I definitely have some favorites here, and I'm super excited to get into them. So let's do it. Number 10 is going to be the Prince Freya manga series by Keiko Ishihara. The reason this is down at number 10 is because I actually did give volume 1 4 stars, and when I first read volume 2 I gave that 4 stars as well. However, I did reread 1 and 2 to get to volume 3, and I re-rated volume 2 5 stars. So starts off not perfect for me, which is not a bad thing, but it definitely gets really, really good. This follows our main character of Freya, who definitely starts off very naive and is a crybaby, that is what she calls herself, but she has to step into the prince's shoes because she looks identical to him, and when he is killed, they don't want the, like, neighbor warring nation with them to realize that. So she has to then imitate the prince. Like I said, I really, really enjoyed this. The first book, I do feel like deals with her being a little bit more of that like naive crybaby sort of thing more than I would like but it also turns quite dark quite quickly and that darkness goes into these ones as well we get more of like the actual like some war aspects in volume three there's a huge cliffhanger in two there's more ah uh, there's just so much in these books and they definitely tug at your heartstrings. I'm really loving the character development of Freya, and so I definitely want to continue in this series. Number nine is going to be Artifact One by J.T. Cruel. This is one that I got to read as an e-arc, and I definitely want to continue in this series. This one is a very hard one to describe, and so I'm not going to get into it too much, but the beginning of the story is a little bit weird for me. We deal a lot more with like political versus religion sort of situation for the plot. And then there is one element that just completely flips it on its head. And I absolutely love it. I loved the continuation. I really, really can't get into it because I want you to experience that flip for yourself. But for me, it was like an epiphany. And that's why I really enjoyed this. The beginning of it Again, that's the reason I don't have it higher on the list. It's just not fully my thing. I don't like the whole politics versus religion in a lot of stories. It really just depends. But in this one, I was a little bit apprehensive because of those aspects until we hit the, like, reveal. And then I was in love. Number eight is going to be Skyward Volume 2 by Joe Henderson. I read Volume 1 one or two years ago. Really enjoyed it. Red Volume 2 this year, still really love it, 5 out of 5 stars. This one follows our main character of Willa, who lives in a world where the gravity has been sort of turned off. So depending on where you live, you either float around and have to worry about floating out to space, or you're more rich and more down to the ground level and you have like mag boots and that kind of stuff. And it's just so, so well done. This is more of an in-between volume, I do think Volume 3 is the last one in this series, and so we started with 1, we went to 2, we're going to be going to 3, but the character development of this is still just stuff that I love. I love the world development here too, because of the fact that the gravity was turned off when she was very little, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's great. There are characters in here that I ship together, and I don't know if that's going to be endgame or not but I just really, really love this one. Number seven, we have The Promised Neverland by Caillou Shirai. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this manga series, and for some people, this is probably much higher on their lists. I have volumes one and two here. The main reason I think it's not higher on my list is I did watch the first season of the anime, and so I knew what to expect from here. I do want to say there is a little bit more details in here than what we get in the anime. The anime does a lot of good suspense building with the like music and that kind of thing. Um, 
I'm very excited to continue in this because it is done now, but we have a ton of volumes. But it's still really, really good. It lives up to the anime. But I have other ones on this list that are like new, new to me. And so I could not put these higher, even though I absolutely love them. This one, I did not say what it's about. I cannot tell you what this is about, but this basically follows orphans who live in like an orphanage with their mother, who is the person that takes care of them. And then stuff happens that I literally cannot tell you about because you need to experience it for yourself. For number six, we have Witchy by Ariel Slamet Rise. This one is a phenomenal start to a graphic novel series. However, I don't think we know anything else about when the next volume is gonna come out, but it definitely ends open-ended enough that we need more. This is a fantastic world where the magic that you have is actually tied to how long your hair is. The longer your hair, the more magic you have, and if your hair is too long, they kill you. This, again, like I said, was a phenomenal, phenomenal start to a graphic novel series. I just really need more. I love the art style in here. I love the fact that we do actually have LGBTQ characters. One of the characters is trans and it's just part of the world. I need more stories like that where we're not having to necessarily go through the whole coming out and being worried about that because not everybody will accept you and something that's just part of the world. Number five, we have For Goodness Sake, Volume 1 by Kaylin Smith. This is actually a very, very short one, but it packs a punch. I love Kaylin Smith's work. I started reading her with Plume, which I don't remember fully when the first volume of that came out. But that's like a webcomic that she also started doing volumes of, and I think I picked up the first volume of that in like 2017, 2018, something like that. But I absolutely love her work. This one follows Thatcher who is a demon-ish type character, and Rain Waters, who is a hippie with a school bus. And basically, he has been cursed to look like a demon. The more mean things he does, the more, I guess not necessarily evil, but like mean-spirited things he does, the more demon-ish he becomes. And she has taken it upon herself to try to reform him. Um, I absolutely love this. I actually just got volume two in the mail because I helped do the Kickstarter on both. That's why I have these. Um, but volume two just recently came out and I'm so excited to continue in this world. Number four, we have Not Your Idol by Ali Makino. This one, again, only two volumes out so far, but I've absolutely been loving these. These are quite dark. We follow our main character of Nina, who used to be part of a like pop idol girl group, but after an assault, she has like quit the group, moved towns, cut her hair off, only dresses in boys' clothes. And so we have a really deep look into sexual assault and especially like the assaults that go from guys to girls and looking at like it's not based on how they dress it is not their fault this could be very triggering especially since we have not on page rape but there is rape and assault in book two especially um we also have another character who is a girl but she definitely wants to be seen by guys as like the perfect girl and so she is like the opposite voice to Nina. Um, again, like I said, these can be very, very triggering, but I really, really loved the emotions with it and the commentary with it. It was so well done in my opinion. Number three, we have Something is Killing the Children by James Tinian the Fourth. This one, I actually have the second volume, but I have not read it yet. This one is super dark. Basically, we start off with something killing the children. It's super bloody and gory. And in this book, we do have a main character of Erica Slaughter, who is coming to this town to basically kill the monster that is killing the children. But there is just so much in here. The ending got to me for sure. And that's why I need to pick up the second one. But the second one was just released in December. So like, I haven't done that yet. But super dark, super bloody and gory. Like this is definitely for mature audiences but I really, really enjoyed the ride. If you like horror and like Stranger Things, but maybe like more horror than Stranger Things, definitely pick this up. Number two, Blue Flag by Kaito. So currently I have the first five volumes of this. I read all five volumes in 2020. The reason this is number two and not number one is because I did end up giving volume five 
four stars. It just followed a character that wasn't my favorite. And while it did have good commentary about like society's expectations with girls and guys in friendships and that kind of stuff, it was too sit down and rant about stuff and not enough like extra story where I feel like it could have been incorporated a little bit better. But basically this follows two main characters. We have Taichi and Futaba who become friends in book one and then they also have friends. They have like a friend group and they're trying to figure out like friendships and relationships in high school. We do have LGBTQ characters in here. We have a love quadrangle. It is very sort of messy but I'm very curious to see exactly where everything is going to go. Um, I've absolutely loved this so far. It definitely tugs on my heartstrings and that's part of the reason it is so high up on this list. And then number one, last but not least, I'm sure some of you guys can guess this, we have Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Cheong. So this is a six volume comic series that, let me see if you can see all six, there we go, that I absolutely loved. This is time travel. It's so, so weird in the first uh, it's just okay it's just so weird so so weird but this is one of those series that you don't really get answers for it until you get closer to the end now I want to say we definitely get answers in volumes five and six maybe a little bit in volume four but for sure in five and six and because it is time travel everything is wonky I actually do want to do a reread of this whole series because of the fact that it feels like it fits together so well by volume six but I do know especially in the first like two three volumes I was scratching my head trying to figure out exactly what was going on but like in a good way I rated all of these five stars because even when I was going huh I absolutely loved it I loved our characterization I will say because the first book is set in the 1980s we do have some things that are not PC we do have slurs that are nowadays we know that they're slurs but back then they weren't things that people knew like even in the 90s when I was growing up they weren't things that we necessarily knew about so that could be triggering for some people especially since I think most of the slur stuff is related to LGBTQ stuff like one of the girls I believe is a lesbian and some of the stuff could be said about that but in general Mac especially in the early books just has the worst mouth and so I almost want to say just be prepared for almost any slur just in case because I don't fully remember what stuff she was saying but there was stuff that she specifically was saying that was not appropriate nowadays but you know for the time period it makes a little bit more sense but yes time travel really really weird shit going on be prepared but hopefully you're able to make it through volume six because if you're not too sure about the first couple it will make sense but this is definitely one of those ones that you sort of have to read all the way through but i absolutely absolutely loved it they're going to be doing an adaption for this i believe an Amazon TV series or something like that. I'm so, so excited. And then that was everything. My top 10 comics, graphic novels, and manga for 2020. I hope you guys have some books that you might want to check out now, or if you have read some of these, let me know. These are the ones that for me were just phenomenal. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos up Mondays, Thursdays, and sometimes Saturdays, so I will see you then. Bye!